message to Theresa Coffey. You claim 200,000 in your expenses while you're cancelling the £20 uplift. Shame on you, Theresa Coffey. Shame on you. To the 2.2 million legacy benefit claimants, three quarters of disabled people were denied the £20 uplift during the pandemic. Shame on the Tory government. Disabled people were making harsh choices between heating and eating. Couldn't afford the increase in the personal protective equipment for their social care workers. Couldn't afford their medication. The government cutting social care during the pandemic when it was needed the most. Shame on you, Boris Johnson. Tax the rich. Tax the rich. Join with us now in two minutes of silence in remembering every person who's lost their lives as a result of 12 years of austerity, who have lost their lives because of the government's appalling decisions due to the pandemic. are rushing through the crime and police bill. They want to ban noisy protests. You will face arrest if you have a protest like this out on the street. These are our streets. Whose streets are they? PC Jepson removing a man with no legs and one arm. No more deaths from benefit cuts. No more deaths from benefit cuts. One cab. Yes, one cab. Thank you. There's some very angry disabled people out here and supporters who are very angry at you and Rishi Senate for cancelling the £20 uplift to universal credit. The biggest cut to social security since the Second World War. 6.5 million families will be impacted by the cut. 
Over 230,000 children will be plunged into poverty. The megaphone, you can't be using it. You're not going to stop us. You're not going to stop us. You will never ever stop us. You will not stop us. You will not stop us. We will not be silenced. 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 2.3 million workers in the UK are currently receiving universal credit. 38% of all universal credit recipients. Working tax credit is also being cut, having been raised by £20 per week in early 2020. One million children in key worker households are currently growing up in poverty. The employment rate for disabled people in the UK is quite low. And now while they're ending the furlough scheme, the cuts in reasonable adjustments are going to do further damage to disabled people work, driving them more into unemployment. This has been the worst 15 years. First we've seen them stripping all the jobs. So many of my peers were tied out through capability. They weren't supported. So many of my peers have died because they were declared fit to work. At some point in our lives, we will become disabled. Whether that be through having an accident or just through ageing, if we get it right for disabled people, we get it right for everybody. One example is making buses wheelchair accessible. That made a huge difference to people with children and buggies. A few months ago, I and others complained to the government about a consultation document that they put out to the public about what they can do to actually improve the lives of disabled people. They actually asked the question, would you be happy to have a physical relationship with a disabled person? What government would put that sort of question in a consultation paper? There's always money when the ruling class in this country needs it. Since the pandemic, private railway companies have been given £6 billion by the government. This week we learned that southeastern trains had their hands in the till. £25 million pounds worth of taxpayers' money has disappeared. But they say there's no money to give to disabled people. They help them feed themselves and heat their houses throughout the winter. We want a new benefit system. Number one, make sure everyone has a decent living wage. Number two, treat everyone with Dignity, respect, trust. Number three, public services with rights and equality. Number four, it needs to be a friendly system. We need to have access for all. Number five, we should have free advice. Cancel the rich, cancel the cut. 20 more for all. Tax the rich, cancel the cut. 20 more for all.